Hey guys, I'm back with another Blade Device review. And uh, just uh, in case anyone's probably noticed, I am filming this exactly after I did the Ohm review, which is why that annoying noise is still in the background. I'll do my best to get rid of that in the editing studio. And that's also why I'm still in this garage, because uh, it is still raining outside. But uh, I've been using this device now for the past little bit. This is the Edelrid Eddy. And... Uh, <laughs> It's probably my least favorite blade device I've ever used. All right, so first thing, let's talk about some specs of this device. Uh, this is a single rope mechanical assist blade device. Uh, it's good for ropes from 9.0 to 11 mil, which is actually a pretty big range. Got to hand that to them. Uh, it's also going to run you about $130 or so off of Edelrid's website. That was the last time I checked it. And so since this is a mechanical brake assist device, for single pitch, or sorry, single uh, rope use, uh, I brought out a different device to compare it with, the time-honored Petzl Grigory. And uh, it is kind of like, these are the same family, and since everyone's used this at one point in their life, it's good to compare this device to that. As well as this is kind of Edelrid's version of the, the Grigory. <clears throat> And so uh, a few things that are different about it is uh, the Grigri, while the plate just slides open, and you can close it and hold it closed by the carabiner, this actually has a lock. See that little point? You press that down, and then it slides downwards. There we go. Whereas the Grigri would slide upwards. But uh, that's just a slight difference. You also notice that the camming unit on the inside is actually a bit bigger than the Grigri's, or a bit more ovular. Then this one you can see is more round, whereas this one is, yeah, ovular. And uh, another huge difference between this device and many, uh, nearly all the blade devices on the market is how you load it. So this is the part where you clip the carabiner into, meaning that it faces this way on you. Same thing with the Grigri. I'm holding my fingers in where you clip the carabiner, and it will face away from you. And then you can see this large difference of the climber's end of the rope coming out of here, and then the blair's end coming out of here. Whereas on the eddy, the climber's rope comes out away from you, and the blade end of the rope is closest to you. Which is a huge difference between this device and many of the other ones on the market. And uh, that, you know, it, it sort of has some goods and some bads along with it. One being that it doesn't add a slight twist in your rope whereas when you're playing with a Grigri you can um, you add a little twist in your rope this one you don't get that twist but it does sort of make more poor habits and if someone's used to playing with this and then gets an ATC there's a good chance that they could load the ATC backwards so that's a little bit of a red flag that you have to make sure another way is how you actually are supposed to belay with it and wrap your hand around uh, which is actually kind of a pitfall of this device. So I'll flip over and show you what I mean. Okay, so here's how to load the device. I already went ahead and slid the plate open, and then they do give you these little symbols right here, like usual. There's your brake can, there's your climber, so that way you make sure that you load it the correct way. So I'll just say my climber is off on that side. Slide the plate over until you hear the click right there. And you can even check if it's locked if you want to. Then take your carabiner, go through the hole and lock it. There we go. So now this is loaded correctly. And uh, you can even do the little test, make sure that it actually locks up. Now I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but when the cam locks up, you can see how it goes down and pinches the rope right there. That's where the pinch point is. So it's almost, uh, it's almost the same side closest to you with the Grigory, Whereas, uh, even though the whole thing is actually flipped over, um, it's you know, like the entire camming system of the Grigri is rotated, you know, 180 degrees. The way how you override that lock is you can press down on this thing, and then the rope slides through. So the way how Edelrid says to play with this thing is, as usual, they say, keep your brake hand on the brake strand. And uh, actually, you can just pinch it. This is like the most comfortable way I've found to play this, this thing. Pinch it right here and just hold it with your hand. And if you pull rope out smoothly, you're kind of good to go. Problem is, sometimes that will lock up on you. So what Edelrid says to do, 
to override the locking, like paying out slack real fast to your climber, is go middle finger and thumb, index finger on this thing, and you hold it open like that. Now I have not yet found a way to comfortably do this. And then usually I end up lifting the handle up a little bit too, because uh, I'm like just trying to pinch this thing and figure out how to deal with it. This is actually a very awkward way to belay, and uh, I can definitely see how a lot of people want to do it. You know, what I've found a lot of people belaying use, or how they belay with this device is they just put their entire hand on it, and then thumb on the cam, and then just throw rope out that way. Which, as we all know, is not an actual belay technique, because you're not managing the brake strand at all. You're just holding your rope up there, and if your climber happens to fall, you can easily hold this down and let rope slide through until they hit the ground. So, or you can let go and hope it just happens to lock up. But uh, that's really what this device makes people do. Especially if they use the Grigri for a while, where your thumb is so incorporated in it. Uh, this is just a lot more ergonomic to hold it this way versus the way they recommend to belay with it. And personally, I can't really do it. Maybe it helps to have bigger hands or something, but I just haven't been able to really get a grip on belaying it out like this, and I end up short roping my climber. So that's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, I don't really know exactly what they're going for, but I think they were just trying to make their own thing. Uh, I think it could use some work. Uh, Especially with that. I mean, everyone I've seen belay with this thing just does what I call the teen kid belay. Because when I first saw people doing this sort of belay, it was kids on, you know, the local climbing team. So I call it teen kid belay. But uh, that's like the biggest flaw with this contraption is how uncomfortable it is to actually belay properly with this device. Another thing I have to add with this is that uh, when lowering a climber, it has a brake assist feature. Or sorry, it, it has a brake assist feature, but I mean it has an anti-panic feature. And I know I say anti-panic like this because it really, uh, when you, you put it on devices like the Grigri uh, Plus with the anti-panic feature, it really doesn't solve all the problems of people being dropped with these things. Uh, I mentioned I'd go into this in depth in my Grigri video, but a lot of times I've seen people dropped uh, in a circumstance where the anti-panic feature really wouldn't help out that much, if at all. This device, on the other hand, I actually feel like it would help out because the brake re-engages so fast. I mean, like, you, you have to be careful because when you're holding the brake strand and lowering a climber, you, get, you pull it back, you have to pull it back really softly and then find that proper speed because the minute you go a little bit past that, it automatically re-engages uh, with the anti-panic feature. And um, if you pull the handle back even further, it doesn't do anything. Unlike in the Grigri Plus, we'll start lowering the climber again. You have to actually let go of the whole thing and then pull it back again in order to go back to lowering your climber. So that is a little annoying. Um, I think that it's not too bad because it kind of helps people learn the balance more or less between the brakes, the brake lever and uh, your brake hand. But I think the minute they go to a different device, you'd have to watch out for bad habits because they could, um, they could do something poorly. I mean, you always have to watch out for bad habits. The more I think about it right now though, um, the more it may not be that way, it may be more like a, it may be more like they are more cautious on the newer device, but you, you do have to watch out for that. Um, and it is just sort of a more larger annoyance to add on to this specific device. All right, so final thoughts on the Edelred Eddy. So I already sort of told you my final thoughts uh, at the start of the video, uh, how I don't really like it. I don't think it's an all around belay device. I think that it would actually be good in like a climbing gym in their top rope section if it is a climbing gym that only uh, or that has its devices preloaded on the rope, which is one of the gyms I worked at for a while. Um, I think that it would be good for that application uh, because uh, it is very uh, 
safe. I don't want to say safe, but it is uh, a bit more touchy than other devices. And you, it's a bit harder to probably make some of the more common mistakes you would find at a climbing gym with this device, uh, such as, again, lowering people too fast because it's kind of impossible on this thing, especially with gym ropes that range in the 10 to 10 point, you know, four range, uh, which is, this is really nice. Again, it goes up to 11 millimeters. So it gives you a lot of options for that reason. Uh, I think for top roping is top rope belaying. It's really not that bad. Uh, it's obvious. It's just as good as any other device uh, that you can use for top rope belaying. I just don't think it's good for lead belaying. So uh, I, I've also heard other things about these lasting a lot longer than other devices like Grigri the Grigri 2, since this has that plate over it, maybe this will last about as long. But for utilitarian work like ropes courses or climbing gyms where they're being used, you know, every day and they're being bashed up and stuff like that, I did hear that these things lasted longer than the Grigri's. So um, that's something to think about. And even though they are a bit more expensive, that may save you money in the long run uh, because I've heard some people say they last up to like three times as long as the Grigri, whatever that's supposed to mean. Uh, I've only had this for like two months or something, but um, it's not really showing anywhere. Actually, I think this part right here would wear out before any mechanical things in here. Uh, yeah, ropes courses would be good. Another thing to think about is it's actually really heavy. <laughs> it's probably about, uh, it's probably about like 30, 40% heavier than a Grigri. And this is a Grigri Plus too. Uh, so maybe like a Grigri 2 would be like, you know, 40 or 50% heavier. This thing is uh, kind of a beast and it is bigger too, just slightly. Yeah, it is slightly bigger. Um, so it's, it is kind of a beast. I really feel like this would be good in utilitarian work. Uh, it would, again, sort of get people in bad habits of having your brake can closer to you when it really should be further from you. But uh, again, for like, just like uh, climbing gyms or whatever, that wouldn't be bad. I don't think uh, it's obviously not the device that would be end all be all, but uh, it's worth like, go ahead, try it out. I really wouldn't recommend buying this because uh, there are just so many other devices on the market, and this is actually just as expensive or more expensive than them. So that's my final thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about this thing, if any of you have used it. And if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next review.